I'm John Wilker, the organizer of 360 Edit. I hope you enjoy this session recording, but first I wanted to mention one thing. We've served the community since 2009, and over the past few years we've had to take on debt in an effort to keep the conference alive. After several unforeseen challenges, not the least of which is a pandemic of indefinite duration, we've had to make the hard choice to end the conference as we're now facing over $100,000 in debt. As a result of requests from the community of how they can help, we've created a GoFundMe campaign. If you're inclined and able, please consider donating to help keep 360 iDev going. The QR code after this will link you to the campaign. Thank you. Enjoy the recording. If everyone that wants to be here is here, we're good. Otherwise, I don't know where I was going with this. Well, in any case, my name is Ariel, and I am going to talk about app store optimization. But I'm not really going to talk about app store optimization. I, my whole idea was to answer questions. And the reason for that is I talk about app store optimization all the time. And if you've watched any of my videos or read my newsletter or really interact with me at any point over the last six years, here or otherwise, you know that. So you may know the basics and you may be stuck somewhere. And my uh, clever idea was if you're stuck, this will be a good place to unstuck, to get unstuck. But I wasn't sure if anyone would come with questions. And I do hear a lot of feedback. So the feedback definitely didn't change. Um, but I don't even need a microphone. I can just raise my voice. Oh, yeah, true. I don't think I can scream that loud. So, um, so I had three tracks for this. <laughs> and help me understand which one is best for you in the audience. Because I wasn't sure who would show up. So one, we could do a Q&A where you ask me questions and I answer them live in real time, uh, preferably with tools. The other one, which I think will be a lot better and a lot more fun, is if you volunteer your apps and in real time, I will tell you what I think about the app store optimization behind you, behind them, if there are any issues, challenges, Um, we can do Mac if you want. The rules are fairly similar in the grand scheme of things. The tools I have do not do Mac, but we can talk about that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You got me. We have at least one iOS app that has already been submitted on Slack. So we can do that as well. I don't know what it is, but I will find it. And then, um, and then step number three is if we don't want to talk about apps and look at their data. Um, I have 26 insights about app store optimization that I think everyone should know. And we can do that too. So does anyone have any questions about app store optimization before we dive into looking at apps? Yes. Ah, that's a great question. But the good thing about app store optimization is you don't really, oh yes, I should repeat the question. For, um, for small developers, indie developers who have few customers, few users, what should you focus on the most when it comes to app store optimization? And um, I think it's a great question because it's, it's, the answer is actually really simple. There isn't a lot that you can focus on with app store optimization. There are two and a half things. Two things are app store optimization and the third is paid ads. So that's why I gave it a half, because it's only partially good. And I have a few tidbits about paid ads, but they're mostly mocking it. So with App Store optimization, you have keywords, and you have, you have performance, and performance is ratings. So if you think about the algorithm, I mean, many of you here, I imagine, are developers. And so if you think about the algorithm, it's, it's an algorithm, really. It's, it's nothing more than a bunch of ifs. It's not even smarter than that. It's a bunch of ifs. And if you know what the ifs do, then you know how to play the game. And it doesn't mean that you have to play the game in order to kind of trick the algorithm, not at all. The algorithm is built in a way that is meant to help people find your app when it's relevant, whether it's a game or an app or really anything else, if there is anything else. So if you think about what to start optimizing, you want to make sure that the keywords you show the algorithm, meaning what's in your app's name, subtitle, and in your keyword list, is actually what your app is all about. Once you have that, you want to make sure that you have the performance necessary to rank in those keywords. And the only reason I say this is because you don't get infinite keywords. You get 30 characters for the name, 30 for the subtitle, and 100 characters, not words, for your keyword list. So you're always limited in what you can tell Apple that, hey, this is what my app does. And you can tell everything that you want. And people search differently 
people say words differently, people think about intents differently. So something simple like, uh, like run tracking versus run tracker, time tracking versus time tracker, those are all different keywords as far as the algorithm sees because it's an algorithm. It doesn't really hear what we, what we say. Um, it kind of does, but only very minimally. And so ultimately, it's, you want to make sure that you're targeting the right keywords where you have the right performance for them. And we'll do a, we'll do a teardown in, in, a, in two minutes. And I'll show you what I mean using the tools. You know what? Perfect. So let me get out of here. I definitely didn't prepare for this. So, oh, I don't even have this lack here. OK, that's good. I only have it on my phone. Let's see what I can do on short notice. Only my slides are really ready for three different ways of doing this. Everything else, not so much. Where did my thing go? Yeah. You live, you learn. Well, let's see. So just to give you, oh, and I'm not connected to the internet. Great. This is a great way to start a presentation. Ah, perfect. I'll do it on my phone, so this way we have internet. I thought to myself, I'm doing a live thing, but it's not a live demo. There's no code involved. It's going to go great. So far, so good. Aha, I am Wednesday. Cool. All righty, so let's look at this. Um, or let's... Somehow figure out how to connect to the internet. Who knows how to connect to the internet quick? Meetings. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's happening. I do not have the code. Who has the code? Uh, I had that from before. I don't think. We got it. Aha. Uh -huh. 72. Thank you very much, everyone. We're going to get out of here. I'm not, not sure what this is. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. OK, so just to give you a, a good, a quick idea of what I was talking about before with keywords and ratings. Um, let's look, take a look at something like time tracking. And what you're seeing here is a tool called Keyword Inspector. This is one of my favorite tools in the world of App Store optimization. Um, and what it does is it goes out to the App Store in the United States and it searches all the results right now. So if you take out your iPhone, it's probably going to look like this. Um, but it layers on top of it a bunch of other stuff that the App Store doesn't show but is Im amazingly relevant for App Store optimization, specifically the new ratings which is what I want to look at. It also does keyword highlighting um, and more stuff. So time tracking, for example, you can see that when you have time tracking in your app's name or keyword or a subtitle, good things happen. And so the first thing I would do, regardless if you're a small app, so this number three has nine new ratings. And new ratings is really the currency of App Store optimization. The more of those you have, the more power you have. And you can go after bigger and better keywords. So this app is a nine. Just nine new, uh, new ratings in the US in the last 30 days, and yet it's number three. So you don't really need to have a lot of downloads. You don't really need to be big in any way. All you really need is to tell the algorithm who you are and what you do, and it will find the right relevance for you. Um, and we can, see, we can see here a whole bunch of interesting stuff that's happening. If you look at number five and you're like, wait, what's happening? They have 1,000 new ratings, and they have time tracking in their name. Why are they not up higher? It's a question I get all the time. And the answer is really messing up their keyword list, the one we can't see. Because you can't duplicate keywords between the name, subtitle, or keyword list anymore. You used to not be able to duplicate between the name and the keyword list, uh, the name and the subtitle. And when I was here in 2019, and even in 2020, I said to duplicate them between the name and the keyword list. Um, that is a no longer good. Now that's evil. Now you get punished for this. So what ends up happening? Not at all. So everything should be unique. Yes, every single word should be unique. And what Apple does, and what's interesting about this is 
it's not that it's, it's bad in terms of just having duplication. The way the algorithm looks at the keywords, it looks at the last instance of the keyword. And then because it associates, uh, it indexes from left to right, meaning the keyword that is first, the words that are first get all the meaning, all the juice. And the words towards the end get less and less and less. And it's less with the name, and then it's less on the subtitle, less on the keyword list. Um, if you're duplicating, you're really moving, you're pushing it all the way to the end. So because it looks at the last, you're always going to be in trouble. And if your competitors are not doing it that way, they're gonna win with nine new ratings. So that's kind of a big problem. And um, so this is a guess that they have it in their keyword list, but I've talked to a bunch of these enterprise apps and enterprise apps usually don't update their ASO very often because that's a whole process and you have to go through layers of management for one keyword. Um, and so they tend to be in this uh, situation where maybe the tip from 2019 um, that is no longer relevant is now hurting them, which really sucks. I'm not gonna lie, but that's what I've seen. <laughs> my, um, so I do this, uh, this sort of analysis every week on my newsletter because a lot of people come to me and say, ah, oh, this thing is evil. This, this whole algorithm is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It was not meant for us. It was meant to be gamed. And that's absolutely false. Absolutely false. It's just a bunch of ifs if you think about them. And in, from what I've seen, the ifs are getting nicer and nicer and nicer to smaller apps, which is why you see in number three an, apps, an app with nine ratings. Nine ratings in 30 days means it's getting minimal downloads. And um, the downloads in that column are estimates. And we don't have any estimates because it's not popular enough for us to even try and estimate. And we aim not to be wrong. So when we feel like we might be wrong, we just don't do anything. Better to not give you a number than to mislead you with the wrong number. That's kind of our philosophy for everything where we manufacture data. So they're not even popular enough to get an estimate. And they're competing with apps that are popular enough to get estimates. We're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands um, in nine ratings. So the algorithm is a lot better in 2022. Continue. I mean, you're, you're giving me my talk, so this is great. Yes. Same for the name, same for the subtitle. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> No, there's no shame in doing that. I, um, the reason I started writing content back in 2018 was actually because I've seen so many bigger companies messing up the keyword list. And that was one of my first guides. And the first tool that we put out was to optimize the keyword list because there are a few other nuances to how you do your keyword list. For example, you're not supposed to use actual words. You're supposed to use, or actual keywords, where you're supposed to split them up and only do words. So if, for example, you want to do time tracking and time tracker, in your keyword list, you would have time tracking tracker not time tracking, and time tracker. And then you wouldn't surround them with quotes, so it wouldn't do additional spaces, you would keep it as bare as possible, and you would also uh, depluralize them, make them singular. So there are all these things, I think there are seven or eight different things. And we have a tool that does it, if you drop your uh, keyword list into it, it will do it automatically for you because it is super simple. Let's see. Um, the tool is here. And if you're an App Figures member and you're like, why does it look like this? This is not the App Figures I know. That's because this is a new look we've been working on for the last year or so. Um, over the last few years, we've added a bunch of new additions to the analytics that many of you probably know us for. We added apps for optimization, obviously. We added competitor intelligence, and we made it all super inexpensive and very accessible. I guess inexpensive is a, is a tough term. It's not an absolute, but as inexpensive as possible uh, and very easy to get into. And we realized that it looks like we have three different things that somehow have one orange menu. So we um, redesigned it, and this is something that we rolled out. We started rolling out a couple of weeks ago, so this is brand new. Um, I love it. I've been using this for about six months now, and I do not remember what the old design looks like. If you have an account and you want to change to this, go into your profile, and there's a little checkbox, and you can check it. And once you do, you will get this beautiful look. And you can undo it if this is too beautiful, and you're like, no, 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 I want the old one, I want simplicity. Um, so this is the tool I was talking about. You drop your keyword list currently from the App Store on top, and then it will optimize it for you on the bottom. In addition to that, it will also tell you what keywords you're looking at. So when, when I said um, you have to look at keywords first, 
but also understand your performance, is you have to look at keywords that people are searching for. For example, if you look at the list, um, the popularity, they're sorted by their popularity, and you don't want to aim for the one that's all the way on the bottom. Sometimes it might be the only thing you can aim for because you don't have enough ratings, but in general, um, you want to make sure that you're always aiming as high as you can. So this makes it a little bit easier to make sure that what you have in your keyword list is good. Okay, so in the example above, what did it just optimize? What did I what? What did it just optimize in this example? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know what's in here. Let's see. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually reset it. So let's say uh, time tracking, time tracker. That's the example that I had before. And this is real stuff that I've seen in the App Store. Track time. So let's say this was your keyword list. Oops. That does not want me to do what I want me to do. And you see now that's taking 41 characters. So almost half of your keyword list is spent on three keywords. And when you optimize it, you're down to 34. We just saved a bunch of characters. And so that's what you would go and you would do and you would do again. I don't know why the quotes are here. They don't need to be here. We'll worry about this later. So this is actually 32 characters um, with a production bug on a live demo. Uh, for those of you who appreciate it, thank you. So, <laughs> um, so, so that's what you would do with your keyword list. And again, you would want to look at something like this um, where you look at the popularity and you look at the keywords and that's how you would choose what's important. What I like to do all the time is I like to go from here to here, so for example, um, let's take a look at, we'll go back to Inspector, and we'll take a look at just tracking. And we see that its popularity is 37, which was kind of in line with everything else. And we can easily see what else is optimizing for those keywords. And it doesn't feel like any of the time trackers we looked at before, so just tracking on its own is not going to be enough. It's going to be very difficult, especially 80,000 new ratings. That's going to be tough to compete with. So you may not want to go for that, but then you look at time tracking. 27, you know, lower, but not disgustingly lower, I would say. The number of ratings is very different. So if you, let's say, get 100 new ratings uh, in a 30-day period, you'll fit right in. And one thing that I can easily see none of these apps do is put the keyword in the beginning, which is what we said before was the way to go about it. So if I have a time tracking app, I take time tracking, Slap it in the front in the beginning of the name, even with 50-ish um, new ratings, I'm going to be number one. That's it's really as easy as that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. So I'll repeat the question. Yeah. Um, the question is, if I am a big brand like Yahoo, for example. Should I also take a keyword and put it in the beginning of the name of the app or not? And the answer is absolutely not. I think when you are a big app that people might search for that keyword, you want that keyword to be in the beginning because it's probably more important. So that was a good case. I don't know how many, how many of you here are on my newsletter or read my app teardowns? Ooh, we got a few hands. If not, you should head to appfigures.com slash newsletter and you'll get great information every week. So this week, my keyword teardown looked at photo storage, the keyword photo storage. And the reason I did that is because um, Dropbox was called out by John Gruber in the beginning of the month, beginning of August, for using App Store optimization as Dropbox. And he made a whole case why it's very silly, and I made a whole case why it isn't. And that's exactly the thing, because when Dropbox optimized, they didn't optimize for the keyword first. So they had Dropbox uh, cloud photo storage. And so for Dropbox, that would make sense, because I might search for Dropbox or photo storage. But, for example, if I'm Schlopbox and no one will ever search for my name, don't worry about that. Put it at the end because no one is going to be competing on it anyway. And so if you have a big brand, a massive brand, don't, um, don't try to over-optimize, but at least optimize. And that's the thing that I'm seeing a little bit more of now, which is good. Big companies using the name to, use, to put keywords in the name or put keywords in the name for abstract optimization as opposed to just using the subtitles, subtitle. Where am I going with this? Uh, but that allows them to actually compete. So for Dropbox, um, they changed their name to Dropbox Cloud Photo Storage. And John Gruber said, this is terrible. No one's going to know. Are they only doing photo storage? And the answer is no, but you only have 30 characters. So what are you going to do? You have to try different things because my mom doesn't know what Dropbox is. So if she looks for photo storage, 
and maybe Dropbox is number five on the list because they used the keyword list because they needed to hide this for some reason. Um, she would never download Dropbox. She has no idea what it is. And nothing on the screen is telling her this is for you to store photos in the cloud. So that's why you want to have that in your name. It's not just for apps or optimization. And it's for human and everyone else, humans, human optimization. Um, so that was my whole point. And that's what I do every week. So definitely subscribe to the newsletter. Any more questions? Continue. Sorry. Is it true in the name and subtitle field, too, that left is more important? Like the further yes. left the word is, the I'll higher repeat the question. Ranks? Is it true that the importance of keywords is from left to right in the name and the subtitle as it is with the, uh, with the keyword list? And the answer is yes. Apple kind of concatenates everything at the end of the day. So it's really everything from left to right. And that's why you would see some apps that don't have a subtitle. Because when you concatenate a whole bunch of strings, if you have fewer strings, you're going to get the, uh, the algorithm juice to spread over fewer keywords. I, at one point last year, said maybe it's worth a try. Uh, at this point in 2022, I will say maybe it's worth a try. Try, but don't, don't expect that to actually give you a huge boost. There are many other ways that would give you a huge boost, both advanced and simple. Any more questions? No, okay, so in that case, let's look at some apps. So I'm looking at the Slack. If you have an app and you want your app to be on the screen, send it in Slack. And I'm gonna go in reverse. And the first one I have is, where's the first one I have? From Anthony, uh, Nebraska Medicine. So let's load up Nebraska Medicine. It's a terrible way of doing it. I'm gonna do it in reverse. Oops, I'm also gonna learn how to type in the process. It's gonna be great. And we're gonna open this. We're gonna do this. So Nebraska Medicine, I don't know exactly what this app does, but that's, whoa. We're not breaking this today. Uh, but, the, but that's less relevant. So, okay, now I know what it does. Manage your healthcare needs on the go, schedule an appointment, view your balance, access your family's health information. So that's actually not really important for apps or optimization. I just wanted to understand what is happening here. Um, Apple doesn't care about the description. Google does, Apple doesn't. Uh, and they don't care about the screenshots. There are many rumors that Apple is reading the screenshots because there's a bunch of, uh, of machine vision in iOS 15 even. Um, I don't think that's true. I have not seen any evidence. Someone actually also told me that they spoke to Apple, and Apple told them that they read keywords from the screenshots. I don't believe that. I don't believe Apple will actually, one, say it, uh, but two, I've seen no indication that's happening. And I keep looking. Maybe one day that will happen. Um, I think there is an amazing amount of reason for doing that in general, but I'll get you, I'll get you. Um, but it's not something that's currently contributing to your rank. There's a question in the back or a hand. Multiple microphone runners are making this happen. So I had a question about uh, when you're planning an app, so ahead of time. Uh, if you want to do this teardown, I can ask my question later. Um, I was just a second too late before you started this one, so what would you prefer? Uh, well, we're, I guess we're doing both. We're doing all of the above. So if okay. you have a question, I'll, that was a I'll great time to, to ask it as we do this. So I would like, so I'm working on an app, it's not out yet, and I would like to make sure that it is optimized. Okay. And so is there stuff we can do ahead of time to do some research? Because I manually just typed in the app store for what I was going to call it and like kind of looking around and stuff. Um, did not use app figures yet. So very curious how Promo you code would... coming up. Huh? Promo code coming up. Yes, I remember. I have it from the previous talk. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm curious what you would recommend or how you would tackle a kind of pre-launch research piece or teardown, that if is you see what I mean. So a good question. So I'll repeat it for everyone who cannot hear. Um, the question is, if you don't have an app yet, your app is being worked on or is almost ready or is about to ship, but it is not on the app store yet, how do you make sure that you're as optimized as possible to have a great kickoff? And um, the answer is simple. It's 
pretty much the same thing you would do for an app that exists already. Um, you would do for an app that doesn't exist because you know the features that are going to be included in the app. You know who the competitors that already exist and who of those are going to be um, probably trying to steal the attention away from you, even though you're trying to steal the attention away from them. And you're also going to understand kind of the user base. Hopefully you understand the user base as you're building this app. So you would do the same thing. You would do keyword research and find keywords that are both um, as popular as possible, but also you would probably aim for kind of the beginning, the entry level, so not the keywords where there are 100,000 new ratings a week or a day or a month, but maybe the hundreds or the fifties or something along those lines. Optimize for the most, bless you, the most important thing, the thing that you think will be the killer feature in your app, the killer intent, the killer benefit. Um, if you were in my talk on Monday where I talked about subscriptions, I talked about benefits versus features and the same concept applies. At the end of the day, people are not buying features. They don't care about your features. They don't want your features. They want benefits. They want stuff that makes them happier, that saves them time, um, that makes them less stressed. All those things are things that a feature isn't. A feature is maybe a video player, but not what the content is. So think about those as benefits and optimize for those. So do some research um, either with this on the App Store, preferably with this, and it'll be a lot easier for you to see what you're up against. Um, one of the tools that I use all the time, especially for apps that are brand, brand new, is the competitors keywords. And you can put side by side as many competitors as you want and see where they're ranking, where there's overlap, where there isn't overlap. And we'll get to that in a second. So I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and that's the easiest way to kind of figure out your starting point. And then after that, you have an app in the App Store, so you do exactly the same things. Cool, thanks. You are welcome. So let's take a look. This is an app that was submitted in the Slack, and my phone has been lighting up, so I think there are more submissions in, um, in the Slack, and I'll try to get to as many of them as possible. But um, this app, the first thing that I see is, can you guess? I said this before. There is a subtitle. Exactly. So the algorithm reads Nebraska Medicine, and you're thinking, whoa, everyone who's going to search for Nebraska is going to find Nebraska Medicine because the number one thing in the name. But then you see it down below in the subtitle. And once you see it in the subtitle, you know that the algorithm is going to see it way deeper into, um, into the string that it makes and tries to get information out of. So you're not going to have the same impact. Now, I imagine this is a very specific app. But even for something like this, where you think people are probably not looking for any real keywords because they might be customers of this, and the only thing they're going to think about is Nebraska medicine. But people are not as simple. People are a little bit more complicated. Because I know, for example, for me, when I think about apps that may not have benefits, um, I rarely remember the name that they want me to remember. And I'll remember like some of the, one of the functions, and also maybe the name. So I may look for Nebraska health, or I may look for healthcare in Nebraska. And that's how I would go about trying to optimize for all of those, um, which I don't see in the subtitle here at all. So I would go after everything that has to do with health, with care. Um, and you're lucky here because there aren't that many, that many different things that you can aim for. So even the experimentation here is not that crazy. Um, you can probably experiment with a bunch of keywords in maybe two or three iterations. So within a couple of months, you can have the most optimized keyword list. And the reason to optimize an app like this, which may seem like a thing that you don't really want, it's a thing that you need when you go to this, um, it's people will search for it when they need it, and it's possible that they won't find it. Maybe someone else is optimizing better for something irrelevant, and they see that first, uh, or maybe a competitor or something relevant or something that's tangentially relevant buys the first ad or something like that, and then you just lose a download. And in, in something like this, it's not a download, it's a relationship in a way. So. That's why even an app like this um, needs to pay attention. And I think it's going to be fairly easy. So uh, something easy that you can do is um, if we go to, we go here. We do this. Let's see what will happen. This all happens in real time, and it does some calculations and some crazy stuff. So if it takes a while to look, that makes sense. And in the meantime, I will look for more apps that we can do a teardown of. Ooh, uh, can I ask a quick question? Yes, please. Um, on the Nebraska app, I noticed it said uh, the age was 17 plus. Does the age factor into um, the ranking, potentially? Because 
it's for a sh you know narrower audience or so? So the question is, does the age, um, the age that's declared by the developer for the app, does that factor into rankings on the app store? And to my knowledge, it doesn't. There are many things that seem like they would, but they don't. Um, this being one of them. While this loads up, I am going to open another app and um, again go in reverse because I don't like clicking links. Frame photos with social light. I spell this properly. Yes. Icon looks this. At yeah, the Wednesday Ariel. Wednesday Ariel. I'm all the way at the top. Oh, so the first app was sent to me by a DM before the before this started. So now we're starting at the top of the Slack channel where everyone can see it. Understood. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry for the confusion. Yes, please download the app. Okay, so the question is, what does this app do? And, and I think the what I see here answers that I don't see any duplication, which is already good. But what I do see is something that I don't necessarily understand. Frame photos with socialite stickers, borders, captions. So this is actually not bad at all. I think there are enough things that would catch my attention. Stickers, borders, captions. I imagine that if we look at these, these are going to be fairly popular. I don't understand what frame photos with socialite is, though. So I, it just sounds a little bit confusing to me. And this is something to keep in mind. When you try and optimize for the algorithm, you still have to optimize for humans. If I look at this and I'm confused by this, um, I may not get it. Even if it's number one, I may just not understand what it is. And I'm going to think, oh, that's not for me. Now, there are ways to mitigate it. If you have screenshots that kind of scream, this is what the app does, um, easy. If you have a video, maybe easy. But you're already starting at kind of a deficit. So I, I would say always think about humans in addition to the algorithm. Um, so I imagine this is an app that puts frames on photos, right? So let's see what Inspector says about that. And our team had some differences as to how we name it and whether keeping that socialite, which was the name of a different product years ago, was important. Interesting. Um, that explains what socialite is. I thought it was something that you'd get in the app. Like maybe it's photos with frames and you attach a celebrity or something. That's where my brain went. So we're looking for photo frames on the App Store in the US. Popularity 34, not too bad. Competitiveness. Pretty competitive. Look at how many apps are competing for this, or how many apps the algorithm sees. It's irrelevant if they're actually competing or not, because that's what the algorithm sees. 13,000, a whole bunch. Um, so this is going to be very difficult to break into, especially if you don't have a bunch of new ratings. Now, there are some interesting things here. So if you look at the list, uh, this is magnificent. So if you look at the list, you'll see that the top app isn't actually targeting the keyword as you would expect it to, because this keyword is pretty popular. 34 is nice. Um, also, the popularity score is between 5 and 100, and it's not linear. So uh, 34 and a 35 are not one point between the two of them. So 34 is actually pretty decent. You will get to 60, 70, 80, where the Instagrams are, and all the social media, and we end up in trouble. And I think we're running out of time, so I'm going to continue fast. Are we really running out of time? Unbelievable. I feel like it's only been a minute. So I'll try to go through quickly, because there are a bunch of apps in this. Um, so one of the things that you see here is that not many apps actually target photo frames. And that's an easy opportunity, because they have photo end frames probably somewhere in their name or subtitle or keyword list. And because they have a bunch of ratings, the algorithm thinks that they're more relevant. But if you have just a handful of ratings, and in this case, it's going to be probably in the 100, maybe 80s, 90s, 100s. Somewhere in that range. It's, it's hard to pinpoint it, but that's where I would think um, you can actually make it. So this app is doing a much better job, number three, because it has photo and it has a frame in the name. It also duplicates photo three times for some reason, which is terrible. Um, but no one else is doing a better job. So that's what ends up happening. And look what's happening here at number six. You have photo frames, but then again, photo gets repeated only in the name. And there's no subtitle. That's why I said subtitle. No subtitle in theory might make sense, but in reality doesn't. And so all the apps here are messing up, helping number three 
that also messes up to get to number three. And this is a 34 keyword, so this is pretty important. This is something that would get you downloads, or at least get you views, and everything else would get you downloads. So let's see what else we have on this. Uh, easy stats for basketball. That's gonna be cool. Easy stats for basketball. This is the one. And let's see what it looks like in the App Store. Come on, App Store. This does not want to work in the App Store. Okay, we're going to have to go. We'll open up the real App Store. Okay, so easy stats for basketball. Super simple stat keeping. Already, duplication. Duplication is the worst sin of App Store optimization and everyone does it, it's terrible. I'm gonna get a shirt that says, no duplication. Just so I can walk around, no duplication, no duplication, no duplication. That's happening, that's coming. I already have it in the, in the oven. That's something I say in a lot of the teardowns, um, but stats is immediately downgraded. And so for something that is this popular, um, you don't wanna do that. Now, the other thing is, are people looking for easy stats or are people looking for basketball stats? I think that's really uh, kind of the, the thought process that would go behind what I want to show here. And let's take a quick look and see what people are looking for. Um, basketball stats. 22, okay. Oh, look who's number one. Question. Um, yes or no and maybe. So. The question was, is there a difference between stat and stats? Are those considered two different words or one word? What? The, the plural and the singular. No, not even that. Oh. Stat and stats. Oh, stat and status. Um, so those, so um, now that I understand the question, is there a difference between the between stat and status? Is the answer and the answer is yes. Um, those are not the same, but the algorithm does depluralize or does understand the difference or the similarity between a plural and a singular. So stat and stats would be the same word, and those would follow the previous rule. So it would get uh, you would get penalized for having it twice. So stats and stat here in this example. Um, so number one is our easy stats for basketball because. Look what's happening. No one's doing a good job. So that's also something you have to keep in mind. That's in theory an opportunity. A 22 is not a bad, is not a bad popularity score. That's actually good. And I would not be surprised if this app gets a bunch of downloads from this. A bunch of downloads with, re with relationship to how much we can do, you know, how much we can get out of a 22 popularity keyword, but that's good. And that's also another really important thing to keep in mind. The algorithm doesn't really care about apps, it cares about groups of apps. So you versus your competitors. And for the algorithm, it's not even a competitor because it doesn't know what you do. It's all the apps that say the same things. And sometimes you would see apps that compete over different features that have similar awards. And that becomes really complicated and the algorithm does sometimes stuff that makes absolutely no sense. Um, but it does make sense because it goes back to ratings and it goes back to placement and it goes back to uh, many of these same concepts over and over. So I would remove the duplication. I don't think it really matters because no one else is doing anything interesting in this space, uh, so you're winning anyway, but that could be a thing that you do just to fortify in case someone tries to do something. Uh, but let's try stats for basketball, and we'll see where that takes us. In the meantime, I am going to go to the next app. Next app on the list is Flight Radar 24. No, that is not the next app. Slack just decided not to give me the preview. Um, IP cams. IP cams, IP camera viewer. Cool, okay. So, I was wrong, stats for basketball is completely irrelevant. At a popularity of five, you should ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. But we're also number one here, so, good. <laughs> um, I would still remove the duplication. Now, if you wanted to do more around this, what I would do is I would try to find all the apps I mentioned basketball, um, and then I would try to understand what they're doing. So I would go to something like competitor keywords, 
Um, and let's just look for random basketball apps. Oh, there's a lot of interesting stuff. So maybe basketball stats. And we'll take whatever this is. And that is not useful. So, wow, I would think that would be a lot more about basketball stats on the App Store. Sports stats. Ooh, no, not what I wanted. Interesting. Status report. Ah, now we found status. And none of these apps are actually ranked anywhere. So this was not the greatest of ways to look at this. But we'll, we'll look at the competitor keywords in a second, and we'll find a way for it to be uh, useful. Uh, but again, if you really wanted to do this, look for more competitors. Uh, look for stats for basketball, basketball stats in Inspector. Then from there, take the top apps. Send them into competitor keywords to get ideas if you wanted to go and try more things to gain more visibility. Or it's possible that there is a set limit of how many people actually want this. And maybe there's one more thing that you can add. Uh, maybe it's replays, or maybe it's news. Maybe it's stats and news. Um, and then you can evolve your app in that sense, and then also include those keywords. So you'll end up with more things to talk about. All right, so next we have IP cams. Why am I doing this here is a great question, but I'm doing this here. IP cams. Oops. I believe this is it. Yes, this looks correct. So this one is interesting. Immediately duplication. I can't unsee duplication at this point. I don't even have to wait for the page to load. I just see it. Um, sometimes it makes sense to, do, to duplicate or not make sense, but sometimes you have to because it's a part of a brand or something like that. And those are really tricky situations. But if you have to do it, you have to do it. Try not to do it. Because again, that devalues a lot of it. And IP in this, uh, in this particular sense is really important to, the, to this app. If it was a secondary keyword or a secondary intent or maybe a secondary benefit, I would say, uh, maybe, you know? Uh, but if it isn't and you want that to be the number one thing, then you would want to make sure you're not repeating it, even if it becomes challenging. Now, here's an interesting thing. So going back to the question about Yahoo that you asked before, in this case, IP cam is not something I know. It's not something that I necessarily understand. And it's not also something that I think many people would search. Instead, they would probably search IP camera unless they already bought a device and maybe this attaches to a device. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. So if that's the case, um, now you would flip it. I would definitely flip this because there's really no value in pushing the most important thing, IP camera viewer, um, to the back of the name. Now, um, all, these, all these protocols and all these formats, I, I don't know if people look for them directly. So it depends on the app. Because I don't know this app, I don't know if that's maybe a special feature. Is that your app? Yeah. Aha. Um, that's, that's definitely challenging. So you can. You can work around ways to say this works with, and sometimes you get away, get away with it. I would not say it's consistent or uh, reliable, but you know, let's, let's see how many people look for protocols. I'm, I'm pretty interesting. So RSTP. How many people looking for RSTP? Oh, wow, it's not a five. This is more, this is crazy. I did not think that would be the case. But obviously, the apps in this category are not really, um, not really big in any way. So maybe it's worth replacing RSTP with something that is a little bit mainstream. So let's see if we can um, IP camera viewer. Let's see what comes up for this. This is a 27. This is not far from that 13. But it is, it's not linear, so that makes sense. And what I would do now is let's take, I was going to be lazy and take the top five. And I'm going to throw these into compare keywords. I don't want to wait. Um, and we hopefully will actually have some keywords for these. And we'll see, we'll, we'll get some ideas. Aha, here we go. So if you look for um, RSTP, is that what it was? No? RTSP. I was close. RTSP. 
not really all that exciting, I would say. I mean, it's nice that you're number one, so that's not a bad thing. I'm sure that someone will, will search for that at some point, but if we go after number one, we can see that um, this is more interesting, camera IP, IP camera, all those, and now you can start finding things like, okay, so pet monitor, which makes absolutely no sense for an IP camera, right? Like, who would search for a pet monitor when they need an IP camera? And that goes back to features versus benefits. I don't, and exactly, and, and it's a benefit, an additional benefit, and maybe that's not something you want your app to do, but if you wanted to gain more visibility, there are people who wanna watch their pet, and an IP camera is the best way to do it, and that's um, an idea. Who does that? Number, the first one, okay, IP cam viewer. So you see, IP cam viewer, they don't use it in their name even, so you know that it's not, I'm officially out of time, but we have 15 minutes for questions and answers, so I think we're technically in there, right? Did I blow through my 15 minutes too? <laughs> yes. The custom product pages? Um, not through this because they don't matter for apps or optimization. They only matter, so the question was, can we track uh, custom product pages and how do they impact this? Or I added that last part because it makes sense. But the answer is uh, we can't track them easily yet, but they don't have any impact on App Store optimization because the App Store technically doesn't know them. It only knows them as a deep link. So if you give me a deep link to it, I will go to that link and that's pretty much it. There's some information that you can learn from how people interact with that page. So if you are doing um, any sort of modifications to that page based on the audience, then you wanna know the conversion rate, but that's very different and that's kinda like the second step of App Store optimization. Um, since we're out of time, I will continue. I'll continue, I'll do one more. Let's see if I can do one more, as quickly as I can. Uh, Little Caesars. It's not what I wanted, let's do Little Caesars quickly. Is that how you spell it? Is there an E somewhere? No, this is it, cool. Um, if you're curious what I'm, what I'm doing here is, because I don't have the links, because I'm going through our competitor intelligence dashboard to find the app, and then from here I open it in the store. That's the very reverse way of doing it, and that did not work for me again. Okay, we'll open it in the app store. Um, but that's how I would look up download estimates and revenue estimates and performance in general and try to understand audiences. So that's kind of for a different type of analysis um, later on. So. Little Caesars, I don't know what I would optimize for even to begin with, but I think with something like this, who's Little Caesars here? Okay, so what do you think your users actually want? Would they download this because they want Little Caesars or would they download this because, um, because they need pizza and they're hungry? I would say because they need food and they're hungry. They need food. I, I would view our competitors as McDonald's, um, uh, other company, anybody in QSR, quick service restaurant. Okay, so then the question continues. So I asked if, it, if it's more the brand or the intent. The intent is I'm hungry, or the brand is Little Caesars, and you think it's the intent. Uh, it's certainly a ton of people that yeah. are looking for Little Caesars. But exactly. So I don't know which it is. I'm not in marketing, you know, <laughs> I'm just yeah. a developer. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, but really what you can do then is you can either look at competitors to try and understand it. Competitor can be, uh, can be McDonald's, can be Pizza Hut, can be Domino's Pizza. It uh, can be really any of the many, many food, food delivery or food apps in today's market. Um, but the, the one thing that I see here is that everything is very compact. And when everything is very compact, meaning there are no keywords in the name, you're really running out of opportunities. So even something like what's in the subtitle, easiest way to pizza, I would do Little Caesars dash pizza. Mm -hmm. Because that by default, especially with what I imagine is a bunch of new ratings, um, that by default will get you to a place where at least the intent is somewhat, uh, somewhat clear. And that's how I would go about it. Uh, but food apps are really, really intriguing, especially if you look at McDonald's versus pretty much everyone else who's trying to give free food for downloads. And that's been working very well for McDonald's, not very well for anyone else. 
maybe a handful. I did a thing on this on my, I have another newsletter where I do news every week about trends in the App Store and on Google Play, in apps in general. And that was one of my, one of the things that I brought up is everyone is trying, but they're not really trying. They just have an app, uh, which is problematic. So that's how I would try and use that. Uh, elevate pizza and continue from there or do some competitor, just competitor poking around to get ideas. Uh, we, um, one of our clients is the BBC and when they started using the platform, and I can say this legally because they were on my show, my live show, and they said it legal, they said it to everyone. So they, um, they started using our tools and we have a tool that shows you kind of what the competitors are using, but for you, just suggestions based on that. So kind of like the next level, if you just want to get stuff um, ready and to happen. Uh, and they saw a few different ways of saying words that they didn't even think about. And they implemented them, and because they get the ratings, they got a ton of good rankings almost immediately. So um, don't have compact names and try to use them for stuff that matters. I'm really curious to see where pizza comes up if I knew how to type inspector. And I'm sorry I didn't get to everyone, but I will, all the ones I didn't get to, I will follow up on Slack and I'll give you my thoughts. How about that? Awesome. Okay, so pizza is pretty cool. And pizza is here. But you can see, so the top three competitors, and my guess was right, uh, top three competitors are putting pizza in their name and they have much fewer new ratings. So Little Caesars. Good pizza, great pizza, pizza business simulator. Yeah. I mean, business simulator, pizza simulator, but they get 2,200 new ratings. And they repeat pizza like crazy. Um, but what I would do is I would elevate pizza with Little Caesars into the name, and I think you'll see uh, within a few, probably a few weeks, you'll see it rise up probably higher. The interest, so this can become a lot more complicated because you see the peak over here? The algorithm really likes these peaks, so it, will, it probably elevated good pizza, great pizza um, to number one, even though it doesn't have it has, I guess, a bunch of ratings uh, because of that peak. But now that it's gone down, you have the opportunity to go in and steal that. So I believe that in, in theory, um, Little Caesars dash pizza could probably elevate you to number one or number two within a few weeks. Just a one little change, which in corporate world will probably take six months to approve, but six months and two weeks and you're number one. So I think that's all the time I have. Uh, I prepped a whole bunch of slides, which I am not going to use, but let's see if there's anything interesting. Uh, let's see, live app teardown, we did this. That's the newsletter. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It's very easy to unsubscribe, so if you hate it, not a problem. And figure that um, some people think that app store optimization is expensive. The tools are expensive, uh, which is very not true. We work very hard to keep them as cost efficient as possible for everyone. We build it for everyone, small companies, big companies. We build it for us. We used to run a game shop back in 2008 when the iPhone just started, 2009, and we decided that we're gonna build this platform for exactly us. We have never taken funding. We have been bootstrapped ever since. We're hiring and we're growing and we're pretty big already. So um, in addition to all of those, there's also a discount in case you feel like all oh, that is not enough to sell you on it. And we'll try to cut this out of the video that John will give everyone in a few weeks. So this is just for you. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much all I have. And if you wanna talk App Store optimization, I'll be here for a while, a little while, considering it's almost three. And that's it. <laughs>